Okay. Um, so what I really like about that video is that, you know, it gives a very um, clear definition of digital citizenship. I think often what happens is that <clears throat> people hear the words digital citizenship and think about the part of digital citizenship that is safety and security. And while all of that is it very, very important, it is not the full spectrum of digital citizenship. Um, being a good citizen in real life involves a lot of things about being safe, being responsible and thinking critically, acting responsibly. And the same goes for the digital world. When you're being a good digital citizen, we're still thinking critically. We are being very safe with the information that we share. We are acting responsibly. We are being um, mindful of what we share, making sure that it's helpful, truthful, and, and kind. So when we look at digital citizenship, citizenship and you hear us saying that today, we are not talking solely about online safety. We are talking about being a good person all the time, whether you're in person or online. So we're going to look at a reflection and you, you don't have to come off mute to, to answer these questions. Um, you can put it in the chat if you want to. The session is being recorded. So if you're not comfortable sharing anything out loud, we, we're not going to make you say anything out loud. But we want you to take just a second and think about your child and your children and think about what words you would use to describe him or her. Um, tell us in your in your in your mind, you can tell us if you want to, <laughs> what are their personality traits? What do you know about their temperaments? What would you say are their strengths? Okay, let's take a second. You might have said that your child is shy, strong-willed, collaborative, communicative, intelligent, curious, um, kind, uh, all of those wonderful traits that, that you just now thought about in reflecting upon your own child came from somewhere. They came from your family. Some of them are inherited traits, but sometimes they come from things that are values within your own family. They, um, things that you have placed importance upon and therefore they are important to your child. So I want you to keep all of that in mind and keep your beautiful baby in your mind while we work through today. And we're gonna look at the next slide to talk about what our goals are. So I want you to think about what are your goals in terms of um, you as a parent and for your child? What kinds of habits do you hope to see in your child or in your children when they're using digital tools, when they're interacting with uh, online tools? And when you think about the, the characteristics that we were just thinking and the goals that you have for your child, what kinds of things are you currently doing that models those habits? What are we doing in the day-to-day -day that shows them what they should be doing and how um, these habits look in real life. There's a link down at the bottom and you are gonna have a copy of this presentation so you can click on it there. That goes to um, a really helpful video about private and personal information. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take just a second because I really think it's worth watching. It's a short video, but I think it's worth a watch. Take a look in the mirror. What do you see? Yourself, of course. But who are you? What makes you, you? There are lots of things. Your personality, your favorite food, your pet, or your favorite movie. Sharing this personal information on your phone or computer can be a lot of fun and can help you connect with other people. Sharing something fun that happened keeps a great memory alive. And sharing what you know teaches other people new ideas. Before you share, however, it's important to pause and think. Some information about you, like your full name, your address, or your date of birth, can be used to identify you individually. This information is private and should not be shared online, unless you get permission first from an adult you trust. So, when it comes to sharing about you, personal info can be okay. But private info? No way. Think before you share with friends, with your community, and with the world. So, what information do you share online? 
Okay. I think that's something great to um, share with kids too. I think it's um, very similar to what we tell them to do in person. <laughs> you don't walk up to strangers and tell them mean things, private things. You, you, you would never do that in person. And the same rules go when we're using online tools. So when you think about um, what your goals are for your child, keep those in mind as we progress through today's training and um, you know, start thinking about maybe one step of all the things we're going to show you today. Maybe there's something uh, that you might take a step toward to reach this goal that you have for your child. So let's get into it. Let's start with the very beginning, and that is transparency. Um, this involves, you know, letting your child see what you do on your phone so that they can learn from their parents and a guardian or a trusted adult what it's supposed to look like. Use social media with your child and be a positive role model. Show them the positive and kind things that you are saying as comments or as posts in the things that you do online. Um, there are many good things. I think that uh, it tends to lean toward the bad things that happen on social media, but it is really helpful for a child for you to show them when really good things happen. Um, you know, putting my, my coworker on the spot here, uh, she has a child who is on the basketball team for one of our high schools, and they used social media to reach out to the middle school kids in the, within the feeder schools to come out to their championship game. And they had a packed gym, and they felt so included, and they were so thrilled, and they were so happy. And that's such a feel-good story, and it couldn't have happened without social media. Um, the children were the owners of it, children who were of age that were old enough to do this were communicating with kids in other schools uh, and inviting them to this thing. And then she told me yesterday that it flipped around and the middle school kids invited the high school kids to come to their game. Like those beautiful relationships and building that community and, and getting those kinds of feel good stories are so important for kids to see that that's really what it's supposed to be. And that's what it's supposed to look like. That's how good it's supposed to feel. Um, unfortunately, bad things do happen on social media, and I, it is important to communicate with children um, things that are age appropriate that are bad, and, and you can show them those things, and you can frame it in a positive light by saying, what else could have been done? What's a different positive solution that is in alignment with our family goals and our family values? What co else could have been said here? It would have been helpful, would have been kind, and would have taken this situation that was not so great and made it wonderful. Like what could have happened? And I really like this image here. You can kind of see that there's a door and you see through the, the door, but there's a, he clearly has a handle on that. It's the transparency is gonna work both ways. When you are transparent with your child about what you're doing in social media on your phone, when it comes time for you to look at their phone, they will understand that that glass looks both ways. And there's some stuff that kind of looks like it's hidden, but you see dad has his handle, dad has the key. He can still get in there if he needs to. So we have to be transparent on both sides of things. Mom, has, mom and dad are transparent and the child will understand that it's a family norm that technology is used transparently. Okay, so, um, Let's talk then about learning the tools. Um, you know, I always say that it, when, we, when we find that our child has a really good friend, the first thing we do is find out everything. Okay, well, where, who's, who, who are their parents? Where do they work? What do they do? Where do they live? What, you know, if, if that person um, has had an influence on my child because they're best buddies, I, I want to know. I want to know what kind of influence is coming in. That's very normal. And um, that's just part of parenting. And when we talk about learning the tools, what I mean is that these social media tools will influence your children. The things that they're reading and seeing and hearing are going to influence them. And anything with that much influence on your child, you should have a front row seat to. Um, and understanding how to use the tools will help you when you are troubleshooting problems, but also highlighting the really positive things that can happen in social media. So what should you look for? 
On the next slide, we're going to see a list of things that when you are learning the tools, these are some great things that you could be looking for. Of course, age inappropriate content. You will know when you see it if this is something that is appropriate or not. You should know and in any social media tool, any digital tool, not just social media, if it requires you to make an account, is the default a public account? How do you change that to a private account? And what are the benefits of having your child using a private account versus a public one? Um, you need to know how you're going to manage location tracking and sharing, how to turn that off, or how to utilize the settings in certain programs that might be able to turn it on for certain people so mommy can see where you are, but turn it off for the public so nobody else can see where you are. Um, discussing real-time video streaming because uh, real-time videos are just that. They're not going to be erased. People can record real-time videos and live streaming is sometimes what it's called. Um, and understanding how to file a report when you see something that is not appropriate. Some uh, digital companies have subpar reporting processes. Some have great reporting processes and some have no <laughs> reporting processes, but you have to know, find out what tools your child likes to use and figure out how to report them. You are your child's trusted adult. And when there is a problem, they have to be, that transparency comes into play and they will come in and say, I know how to help you. I, I, we will figure this out. Um, there, are temp, there are some apps like Snapchat that has something that, it, that claims to be a temporary photo, temporary video, but we all know that temporary is not a real thing in the internet. <laughs> There's an analogy about the tube of toothpaste that you've probably heard, like, you squeeze the tube of toothpaste, you can try to shove that toothpaste back in there, but you're never going to get it all back. So um, while something might claim to be temporary, there are many, many ways to do screenshots and screen recordings of things that you think are temporary and are actually quite permanent. There is no such thing as anonymity. You can always find someone um, who is behind something, and we've all seen that. So uh, hiding behind an anonymous screen name is really not a thing. Um, ads and in-app purchases are important because advertising is targeted. And also in-app purchases can be tied to your funds, your bank account, your credit card. So it is really important to know, learn the tools well enough to know that in the settings, you can check to make sure that any kind of in-app purchases are turned off if your child does not have authority to buy things. Um, and then, of course, the big one is the cyberbullying and negative culture. Um, those kinds of things uh, have to be reported, and you are your child's best role model. When you see something that's negative, talk about it. It's okay to talk about the things that are negative and to frame it in a positive by saying, well, what would you have done in this situation? What's a positive way that we could have found a better solution here? There's a resource down at the bottom, which you will have a link to, which is the ultimate guide to Instagram. Instagram tends to be a very popular um, tool for specifically middle school. Um, it kind of changes from time to time, but um, right now it seems to be a very popular choice uh, for kids. So it's important to know all the kinds of things that you uh, will run into with Instagram and this resource from Common Sense Media is outstanding. Here are six things parents may not know about the popular social image sharing platform, Instagram. Number one, according to the terms of service, kids should be 13 years old before signing up. Unfortunately, Instagram has no age verification process, so lots of kids younger than that are using it. Number two, some users have multiple accounts that are completely separate from each other. Fake Instagram accounts are public facing and highly curated and project an ideal online persona that's hard to achieve in reality. Number three, depending on whom you follow or what you search for, you can find lots of mature content on Instagram. Whether it's cyberbullying or oversharing, comments on posts can be downright vicious, especially if an account is public. Number four, Instagram accounts are public by default, so the first setting to change is the privacy setting. With a private account, only people you approve can see what you post. Number five, using Instagram might affect a teen's body image and sense of self. The pressure to look perfect or to get the most likes and followers means some teens will be comparing themselves to others. 
And number six, Instagram is also a place kids can be creative, posting art, poetry, and videos that showcase their talents. So when used purposefully and in balance with other activities, the app can leave kids feeling connected and positive. For more tips, visit us at commonsense.org. Okay. Um, so knowing what you know about your child at the beginning, we started with, with a reflection of what you know to be true about your child and knowing what goals you have for your child. Um, when you think about all of that, let's tie it to what they're really using these social media tools for. At this age, it's very typical that they are using them to build relationships. Also at this age, it is typically relationships with people that they see in person as well as online. So one of the best things that we can do as parents is to show them how we as parents um, develop relationships in a digital society. Um, I, as a, as a mom, I know when a relationship is safe or harmful in real life, and I've had to learn how to determine if a relationship online is safe or harmful. I am old enough now that I have online friends that I've never met in person, and I have online friends that I sit next to at work every day. So there are healthy relationship boundaries in person, and there are healthy relationship boundaries online. And that is very hard even for adults sometimes to manage. Um, and so we have to determine within our families what feels right. What, what do you know about your child to know where to set that boundary? What are your goals for your child so that you know what to show them about your own relationships? You as a parent are the best role model for your child. So sharing what boundaries you set, understanding that they can see what you commented, what you posted, what you shared, what you liked on social media. Let teach them how to do that and how to develop relationships that are always and most importantly safe relationships. Um, and I, you probably heard this in the video and that this what this piece of information tends to surprise some some parents sometimes. Um, but there is a law, it is called COPPA. It stands for Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Um, and what that means is this, anytime you sign up for something, you are sharing your personal data. For example, you as a parent might have an email address, a Gmail address. You might have used this email address to set up an account to buy something online. Maybe you have a favorite shopping website that you use that you had to put your address in. It saves your credit card and your address because you buy stuff and it gets shipped right to you. Sometimes you use that email address to uh, sign up for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. Anywhere you have used an email address, it is going to um, connect that. It is a very complicated web of data that belongs to you. That data is very valuable for marketing and advertising, and it is sold every day. So social media is not free. You are paying for it in some capacity. Now, they, um, there is this law, COPPA, that says that very private personal data cannot be sold if the child is under the age of 13. Now, COPPA started in the late 90s, so this law has been around almost 25 years, and in the early stages of this federal law that started by the Federal Trade Commission, um, lots of companies were getting fined because they were found guilty of selling data of children under the age of 13, and now that it has been many years, um, when you sign up for something, you know how you see the terms of service? check this box if you agree. Lots of people just steamroll right through that and check the box and click okay and off they go. But when you look at that, you are agreeing to everything in there and it's in there that it says the age of which they're going to sell the data. So in this example on the screen, Leah searched Snapchat age requirement and it says 13. So legally, no child under the age of 13 should have an Instagram account, a Snapchat account, um, 
Insta uh, Twitter's like that. TikTok is like that. Um, they are really not legally able to have them. Using social media is a privilege for those of age. And it's, it's similar to driving. There's, there's a period of time where you're learning with an adult and then you have to get a license. And just because someone is 16, they may not even have a license at that point, but they're still learning the rules of the road, just like um, children are learning how this is going to work. Um, so it is important to consider, uh, you know, you may have inadvertently violated this law because you may not have known, uh, but we know now. <laughs> So, you know, thinking back to the personality traits of your child, the, the, the goals that you have for your child, we're gonna keep coming back to that reflection piece to think about, are, are we as parents modeling good digital citizenship here? Are we using technology in legal and ethical ways? Are we modeling for our children um, the, the right ways to use digital tools that are age appropriate? So let's talk a minute about rules and norms. So I bet you've seen an image very similar to this before. And I would bet that most of you have talked about why the medicine in your home is in a cabinet that the kids can't reach. You've probably had lots of conversations. If you have stairs, you've probably had conversations about why there's a gate on the stairs or why we're careful on the stairs. You may have had conversations about um, you know, <laughs> you may have had conversations about lots of different kinds of ways that we are safe in the home. So what are some rules that we currently use in our house and how often do we talk about them? I, I, I can hear the sirens. Can, I don't know if you, they're coming through on my microphone, but um, they're testing the tornado sirens every Wednesday. That's one of our norms. We are all used to in the city of Plano, our norm is that we hear that and we know they're testing that for us. They're making sure that we're gonna be safe. That is a norm. It's something that happens regularly. What kinds of norms do we have in our family keep us safe just in our homes? And what kind of norms do we talk about in our family about keeping us safe online? For example, um, on the two images that you see on your screen, just be nice to people online. That's no different than when we tell kids, be nice at school today. You know, be careful with what you share. Keep your information private. Check those settings. Know how to uh, keep your passwords safe. Um, when we talk about family norms for digital tools, we frame them. Um, if you look at the image that's in purple, you will notice that these norms start with I will. These norms do not, these rules do not start with don't keep your phone in your room. Don't get social media. Don't do this. Don't do that. That, that is not the way we roll. It is not going to work. <laughs> what will work is saying, I will or I can. Start your family norms. Start your family rules with the words, I can or I will. And that will frame it in a positive light. And the second part of a family norm or a family rule should end with because. And have a conversation with your child and let them come up with the because. And I, I have two sons, they're both elementary age, and they came up with um, the because for why we charge our devices in the living room overnight. My husband and I charge our phones in the living room overnight. Any devices that we have are in the living room. And that norm and that rule, it could very easily say, don't keep your phone in your room at night. Instead, we framed it in the positive. I will charge my devices in the living room overnight because, and my kids said, I need to sleep well. I might get distracted. That's, that's absolutely right. Mommy could get distracted too. And uninterrupted sleep is really healthy. It's really good for me. It's good for all of us. So that is our why. Now that might not be the why in your family. You might have a different because. This is just an example of a good starting point to have these conversations. Start talking 
about these kinds of norms so that as they get older, it is just a part of your natural day. I will keep my password safe. I'll keep it a secret. Why? Because it keeps my private information safe. They have to understand why all these norms and rules are so, so important. So again, these are just a sample. Hopefully they might trigger some conversations and get you started and start thinking about um, ways that you can do this within your family. I really like this quote, Leah found this um, on the Common Sense Media website, and I really like that it says, when all else fails, tracking software might too. I love me some tracking software. I love some management software, y'all. It is good stuff. But I am not solely relying on a tool to help my child understand the very delicate and very serious world of online life and digital tools. Technology is going to help you, he says, but it's not going to get away from the fact that you should be having more conversations about this with your kid. So there's nothing wrong with having these um, tools that help us track and monitor. That's fine. You absolutely will need them. Um, but you also need to make sure that you have your child's passwords. You have to take that device and you have to check their social media if they are of age. Um, I have seen families say we're, we're on a pathway to letting our child use social media more and more as they're getting older. And we sometimes change the Wi-Fi password because we need to stop them from getting on the Wi-Fi. We have to stop internet access because we are working within a boundary. And I know my child and I know the goals I have for my child. I know the personality of my child and changing the Wi-Fi password is something that helps me as we're on our way, this pathway to independent use of social media tools. Some families have the ability to turn off the data plan on, on devices when they're working on a pathway for their individual child. So talking about making those good choices and understanding that those boundaries exist for a reason is, is absolutely important as they work up to the privilege of using social media on their own. So start thinking about in what ways are you giving your child a chance to grow under your guidance with digital tools? Because I love that the, this screenshot that you're seeing right here Parenting media and everything in between. This is a great tool for understanding parent controls on something like an Xbox One, Google Classroom, setting up your kid's iPhone, Parents Ultimate Guide to Zoom. These are all very important and very crucial tools. We have to understand our job as parents to um, block sites and monitor what they're doing online. But also, how are you giving them a chance to grow? How are you giving them a chance to use these tools under your guidance so that you can show them what they should be doing and how these things should be working? So I love this bike analogy. Um, and uh, Fern and is the one who, um, when we were talking about this, it was, uh, Fern, who said she approaches it like learning how to ride a bike. So I want you to take a minute. If you're, if you have children who are old enough that have been riding bikes so long, you they probably are. You probably remember what it was like when your child got a tricycle for the first time. That big, those big three wheels, and they were just tooting along and going down the sidewalk. It's very cute, but it's also extremely safe. And you probably weren't letting them go off into the street and you were monitoring every second um, that those little legs were, um, you know, strolling around on that cute little tricycle. That is the same in social media. Our children are so young and most of them are not of age to have these social media tools anyway. Um, there has to be a tricycle stage where you have to determine what that looks like for your child. You have to look at it in saying, I'm going to be right there with you. you. You are at the very early stages. It is very serious. It's a lot of fun. These tools are so much fun. But there are 
there's so much to learn about how it all works and you're not going to go it by yourself. I'm going to be right here to help you. So let's start with that tricycle. But then that little baby gets better. And then there's training wheel stage. And I love this image because, you know, that, that, that baby is probably wearing a helmet and you see mom, look, where's mom's hand? Right there on that handlebar. Look at dad's hands. What are they doing? Waiting. Because if that baby takes a tumble, they are right there. Nothing's going to happen to that baby. They are right. And we have all seen a training wheel bicycle topple over and there topples over the little baby. That happens. They're still going to stumble and they're still going to fall, but they're not alone. These things that, that if when we translate that into the world of social media, when something happens to them or something is said about them or something hurtful, they see something hurtful, something painful, something that's a lie, something that's not true. One of their, something happens to one of their friends. These are very real serious issues and they need their guardians, moms, dads, whoever is their trusted adult to be right there with them. And you as a family have to come up with a plan. What does in your family, what does it look like in the training wheel stage? For using social media, what does your plan look like for getting their passwords and checking their devices and looking at their phone and understand who are their friends? What are you posting? What are you commenting? We have a norm of transparency. Let you can see mine. And I, I, I'm going to show you my social media accounts, but you have to show yours too. There's no secrets here. Mom and dad are right there all the time. And pretty soon your child gets a little bit older and then they're on these two wheel bicycles. And you have to consider what is your plan for this two wheel bicycle stage of social media? How are you going to continue monitoring them? What age do you think it's right for your child to use social media tools completely free of you? I know some parents who monitored all the way till graduation. I know some who monitored just until a certain age because they felt it, they were fine. They, they, we're not here to tell you that it's a magic number or a magic character trait or some kind of magical thing that happens that suddenly you no longer have to monitor your child on social media. That is a very personal decision, and you as a parent will have to come up with what feels right in your family, what norms are right in your family to let your child do this on their own. And sometimes, you know, you think about, well, you know, I have a 10-year-old. He rides that bicycle. Great. He's not going to go get in, ride in the Tour de France tomorrow. He's not there. But he can absolutely go down the trails near our house and ride on the bicycle, but guess what? I'm right behind him. <laughs> I'm on my bicycle right there with him the whole way. Um, he's never by himself on uh, doing these things without us. We're still there watching just in case. So that's what it looks like in my family. It may be different for yours. There's no right or wrong. You're gonna have to figure out what your goals are. And I keep saying this, think about your child and the personality of your baby Think about the goals you have and how you're going to apply that to the tricycle stage, the training wheel stage, and the bicycle stage when they are of age to legally use these tools. So one thing about parenting is in this kind of talks, we, have, we keep it positive. Um, we speak in we will and we can. We do our best to avoid phrases that start with do not, I can't. We try to keep it as positive as possible because we are the best influence and we are the best role model for our children. There is nobody better than you. Uh, so everything that you're doing, the behaviors that you're demonstrating, the way that you are living are the kind of behaviors that that are that's what your children are seeing every day. So let's make them positive and let's make them helpful and let's make them kind and let's show our children how we can have social media. We can use all of these tools and we can use them for play. We can use them for learning. We can use them to help each other. There are so many positive things that happen. Um, we just have to be the people to shine that positive light on it and frame it that way. 
So we've reached the end of our presentation. And before we let you go, I want you to, we're gonna end with a reflection. We've learned a whole lot today. We've given you so much information on the, not, we're not gonna switch slides yet, but on the next slide, we have a ton of sources for you coming up. Um, but I want you to take a second and just think, what is one step? What are a few steps? What can you do to take a step to reach your goal? You've been thinking about what kind of goals, what kinds of behaviors you wanna see in your child. What can you do? What can you change? What step are you gonna take? And you don't have to say it out loud and you don't have to type it in the chat. You can just say it within yourself and start thinking about and reflecting upon everything we learned and what's right for your family. Okay. So as promised, the last slide has a ton of resources. The very first one, pisd.edu slash D-I-G-C-I-T, Digital Citizenship. Um, there's a section there um, called Parents. And within that Parents section, everything we talked about today, including a copy of this presentation, is sitting right there. All of the Common Sense Media videos and resources and all the great things that Leah found, these amazing resources, she has listed all of them right here for you because and she is the genius behind our website, by the way, you guys. And so <laughs> in case you didn't know, um, I like to take a minute to brag on her. Uh, so you can see all of the stuff that she's built in there. <laughs> 